I have a joke for you, and I've told it before, so I know you're going to actually like it. <laughs> this is a tried and true one for each of you. So there was a man who was driving down the highway, weaving in and out of traffic, honking at every car that it thought got in its way, being so rude, being so aggressive, giving the fingers to a few cars along the way. And suddenly he noticed that there were flashing lights behind him and a cop was stopping him and asked him to pull over. And as the cop and the police officer came to the car, the gentleman was so surprised and said, sir, officer, officer, what did I do wrong? And the officer replied, well, I noticed your erratic driving, how rude you were, your behavior. I saw you giving the finger to that old, sweet little old lady down the street. And then I saw that you had these bumper stickers that say, love all, peace on earth, choose kindness, I love unity. I swore you had stolen this car. <laughs> I remember we're laughing the first time I told that. <laughs> well, listen, I like to share that joke when we talk about values, because for me, it really accentuates what values mean to me, which is that way in which we want to um, have people experience us in the world right? It's the way in which we want to show up in the world. And it's an invitation to recognize consciously or consciously what it is that we are bringing into the world. And so in many ways, our core values is what we're saying to people, this is who we are. Now, just like that gentleman in the car, we don't always live up to it, right? Because values are aspirational in nature, they're inviting us to go deeper within ourselves. And so, yes, there are many times when we show up as our core values, and it's beautiful, and it's wonderful. And haven't you found that when you get to a certain level of showing up and feeling comfortable about the ways that you're showing up, oh, there's a bigger opportunity to show up in even greater ways with those values that we hold. How many of you have experienced that? You know, you reach a plateau of niceness, and all of a sudden, there's a bigger opportunity to be nice where sometimes it isn't easy to be nice, right? And so they are in, uh, aspirational in that way. I want to speak to you specifically about unity on the base core values because, one, I want to be in gratitude for the ways in which we do show up as these core values in different ways. I want to be aware, right? I want to be conscious of what it is that I'm not only experiencing through unity on the bay, but who I get to be as unity on the bay. And the second reason is because it's always good to look at our core values, to check in. Not only are they still true for us, but are they calling us forward or forth or going deeper or expanding us in some ways, right? Are there ways in which we are being asked to live them and embody them more deeply? And sometimes I believe that when we aren't very conscious or aware of the core values, whether it's of the spiritual community or your own personal core values, we tend to sometimes put them to the side or forget the ways in which we are intending to show up in the world. And so it's just a powerful thing to constantly be looking at our core values. As I speak about unity on the base core values and uh, invite you to consider how they're not only showing up, but inviting each of us into greater experience of them and expression of them, I invite you to consider how these may be your core values. Because I believe that we've all found ourselves here by divine appointment and something connected us to it. So they may not be specifically the core values that you might have on a list for yourself, but I pretty much bet that you can find ways in which you are being called into these in not only spiritual community, but in your life. Values are really important in that they really invite us to consider who we have come here to be. What have I come here to express? How many of you have found yourself in life asking that question? Why am I here, <laughs> right? Like, what is this all about? Who am I, who do I get to be in the face of life, in the face of humanity, in the face of actually our, also our divinity? And for those who are new to unity, um, this is just a really wonderful experience for us to just be a little clearer about who you have come to connect with. Now, these values is not only who we say we are, it's also who we aim to be. Can you hold that both can be true? This is who we are, and this is who we aim to be. 
This is how we want to show up. And this is even when we don't show up in these ways, the ways in which we are going to envision ourselves showing up the next time. Rather than a bumper sticker, I've shared with you that core values are more like the little stickies that you put on the windows, you know, that have a little saying or a little graphic, but you can still see through them and people can see through them, right? And that's how I really feel about values. It's no longer a bumper sticker outside while you're just driving on the journey of life and, oh, look at me, this is who I am. It's more, oh, wait, this is how you get to experience me. This is how you get to see through me into the core of my being, and this is how I want to experience life. Because it's also about us, right? This is um, the lens by which I want to experience life. This is the lens by which I want to experience God. This is the lens by which I want to experience each and every one of the relationships that I find here at Unity on the Bay, whether that relationship is with other individuals that are part of this community, that relationship is with the God of your being, that relationship is with your higher self and that Christ's nature that you are. Mahatma Gandhi said, your values become your destiny. Think about that. Your values become your destiny. What you say you value, what you aim to be, becomes the journey that you are taking. It all of a sudden becomes your life. And so the question becomes, how conscious or conscious do you want to be as you journey through life? Shared with you before, Neil Donald Walsh, you know, talks about there being a, a life of chance and a life of living consciously. And a life of just chance leaves it to chance. A life of living consciously really invites us to set the tone and recognizes that we are the creators of our own experiences and our own lives. Because we know that thoughts in mind held after their kind, right, or create after their kind. We also know that what matters to us most is the things that we will work to create and manifest in our lives most. We know that what we think about brings things about in our lives and that where our attention flows, energy flows, power flows. And as a result of that, experiences flow. When speaking about setting these values, it's really an intention, and in many ways, um, it's part of the growing, right? I've experienced that. Maybe you've experienced that. When I've said, this is who I want to be, not only do I get to live into that, but have you found that there are opportunities that show up that say, oh, all the ways in which you aren't those things or all of the ways in which that may not be how you know yourself, they're going to come up for healing, right? Right? Have you experienced that? It's like, I'm abundant. And all of a sudden, you know, you're, you, lo you lose your job, right? Like that happened to me once in, my pros in, in a prosperity class that I took. I was like, I'm prosperous, I'm prosperous. 10 times in the morning, 10 times at night. Next week, I got into work, you're like, you're fired, right? <laughs> but I have to share with you another experience. Um, many of you know, Tom and I adopted Lucas when he was five days old. In the adoption community, um, uh, when you adopt a child, uh, what they call it is becoming a forever family. And so we were about four years into our relationship. You, many of you know we're now together 16 years. We were like four years into the relationship, and I have to tell you, those few months as we prepared to be somebody's forever family were some of the most trying times between us. Because, and I think about this, I was like, well, I say I want to be a forever family for this child, which means that I'm going to be a forever family with this guy, Tom. And so every little thing that I thought um, was never going to come up for healing came up for healing because I believe that the universe, God, intended to heal that which might not let make us a forever family for Lucas. And the more that we were able to be conscious of that and really live into that, what does forever family mean the greater harmony, the greater strength, the greater foundation we found for our family. But if we don't remember what the value is or we don't remember what it is that we want to put out into the world, when those things come up for healing, sometimes we get stuck, right? Because we don't know. See, values are also sort of like a, our North Star. When things get a little fuzzy, when things get a little weird, when things get a little zigzaggy, it's important to know where we're heading. It's important to know what the vision that we're holding of ourselves is, including here at Unity on the Bay. Now, when we did, um, redid our website last year, Jason, our director of marketing, um, asked me to, <laughs> yes, he has a few fans. 
<laughs> um, Jason asked me to actually put some phrases together because in the past we've only had the words itself and as many of us know, we can define those words in many different ways, right? Uh, which is fine because that is unity also, that you can redefine what these core values is. And he asked me to put a little bit more meat um, on these and I wanted to share them with you today. So the first uh, core value that we're gonna start with is diversity. And it says, we are inclusive and celebrate all people's identities and journeys. It reminds me of one of my favorite uh, Bible verses is from Galatians 3.28. And it says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ. You are all one in Christ. As we come together and we see, how many of you see the diversity that is unity on the bay? How many of you? Yeah. Can I tell you? It's not always the case, not, not only in spiritual community, but even in unity. We are the, the, one of the most diverse unity communities in the whole world. It's one of our superpowers. Yes, and it's a beautiful thing, and it's a beautiful thing that really invites us, right, to not only live and enjoy it and be in gratitude for it, but it also invites us to ask the question, how do I welcome it? How do I welcome it? How do I allow that um, diversity to show up? What about diversity of thought? Have we considered that? Is everyone welcome at Unity on the Bay? Good. But it really invites us to, again, we see the diversity and are there ways in which we can welcome even greater diversity to who we are so that we don't only see it, but that we can experience it. So that's the other piece of diversity for me, right? Like one thing is that we see it, but are we connecting to it? Are you saying hi? Are we saying hi to people that don't look like us, think like us, maybe behave like us, even here at Unity on the Bay? So it's not something that only we're seeing, it's something that we're connecting with. It's something that we're building relationship with. And I really encourage each of us to not only be in gratitude for the diversity, but to continue to ask ourselves, how can we bring greater diversity into who we are and how we show up? Then there's generosity. It says, as we extend ourselves to others, we reenact the givingness of God and experience grace. I love this quote by Buddha. Thousands of candles can be lit from a single candle, and the life of the candle will not be shortened. Happiness never decreases by being shared. That, to me, is such a good definition of generosity. Anything that we give does not decrease. Because what we give, we get to experience as we share it. So many of us come to unity or just start our own spiritual journeys because we want to know God more fully. How many of you have wanted to know God more fully? How many of you are still in the journey of learning and being with God? Myself included. And when we talk about generosity, it's like that old adage, you know, to really know somebody, walk in somebody's shoes. And so if I want to know God more fully, how about I start acting from the place of God, from the place of my own divinity, from the place of my Christhood, which is generosity. God is always creating. God is always manifesting through us. God is always expanding. And that is the generosity that is showing up. And so whatever that generosity is won't be decreased. As we are generous with others, generosity comes back to support us. It is that ability to be able to, as we share love, to then be open to experiencing love. See, uh, what is that greatest commandment? To love God and to love our neighbors. It's not to be loved. Think about that. It's not to be loved. And how many of us go through life just wanting to be loved? Just wanting to be loved. And if we fall into or we lean on love God and love each other, then when we express that love, it comes back to us fold. And that's how we experience ourselves as not only loving, but as love itself. And so how are we being generous with each other? Not only financially, not only through sacred service and talking to Leo about how you can be part of our volunteer groups here at Unity on the Bay, but how are we being generous with each other when something comes up between us? Are we generous in the way that we want to experience each other, the lens by which we want to experience whatever it is that came up? And so continue to be in that space of how can I be that generosity of spirit in all acts and in all ways at Unity on the Bay? 
Gratitude. This is a pretty simple one, right? Sometimes. We give thanks for who we are, what we are, and how we get to experience life. So we are not victims. We are creators. Now, to me, this is just give thanks in all circumstances, right? Those powerful words, thank you, God. It is that exclamation point in recognizing, wait a minute, there's a blessing here. Or even if I don't know what the blessing is, I know that there will be a blessing in this. And so that's the exclamation point that says, I believe I believe in the blessing. I believe that there is a blessing at hand. I believe that God is present, is here, is now in this very moment. And that's why I like to give thanks for each and every one of you. You know, I like to share that we are unity on the bay and we wouldn't be the same if you weren't here. And so that gratitude extends from me to all of you. And I trust that that gratitude extends from you to all others. And in that, be grateful for all of the ways in which unity on the bay is in the world, in our life, and all of the ways in which it's asking us to be a greater expression of light. Gratitude is our lens. What can I be grateful for in this moment? Ask yourself now. Actually, not even, that one was too easy. I'm going to ask you, take a moment right now and think about three things that you are grateful for, for unity on the bay or that you've experienced that unity on the bay. Three things. Thank you. Are the way that we share our truth principles, the music, the workshops. Well, as you experience that gratitude in your hearts, how did that feel? Isn't that expansive? That's who we are. We're an expansive community. And... Gratitude creates the space for healing. For those moments where we don't show up the way that we intended to show up, being in gratitude that we're aware of that, or being in gratitude for the opportunity to try again, or being in gratitude for recognizing that regardless of how I showed up, I'm still loved. I am love. I am God's beautiful expression in the world. Which brings me to love. We are a loving community empowered by our healthy and harmonious connections, expressing and feeling the loving nature of God. When I reread this one, (laughs) I love it and it calls me forward. It really uh, invites me to open up. Healthy and harmonious connections. How many of us have experienced those relationships here? One of my best friends uh, came from Unity on the Bay. Many of my closest friends are people that I get to share with here at Unity on the Bay. And so many of you have found connection here at Unity on the Bay. Asking ourselves, what would love do in all of our interactions? How, um, when we show up to workshops, for example, right? Like, what would love do in this moment? Ah, Maybe love would open me up to the wisdom that's at hand. What would love do as I walk in and see Stephanie, uh, you know, and I have the moment to have that clear head to ask myself, what would love do? What would love do in this moment? I really thought, like, I, I, I shared what would love do a while back, and I really felt like it was a missed opportunity to not make those bracelets. Remember those what would Jesus do bracelets? At some point in my life, we're going to get into the what would love do bracelets, but really inviting us to do it. True love is to be shared, and it cannot be hoarded. True love um, is a blessing, and it must be expressed rather than repressed. And at all times, asking ourselves, how can I show up in love and ask love, and how open am I to experiencing the love that is at hand? You know, Sam talked about love and the love that she's felt here. It takes courage, it takes strength, it takes wisdom, it takes a receptivity, it takes trust to be able to experience that level of love in any relationship, including the relationship with the spiritual community. I love uh, one of my uh, favorite Unity speakers, uh, Martha Smock, also invites us to recognize that in the face of not experiencing love, whether in a situation here or out in the world, in your own personal life, that it is a call to love. She says, do not be discouraged by what seems to be a lack of love in your life. Rather, make this an opportunity to release the great gift of love that God has implanted in your heart. 
See, all these core values, they're the truth of who we are. They're the ones that we have singled out to say, this is how I want to experience God. This is how I want others to experience God through me. Now, the next two I put together because they're pretty similar. Being spirit-led, we have faith in God's wisdom and trust the still small voice within us, as Angela shared with us during her meditation, and uh, wisdom. Oh, wait, I messed that up. Being spirit-led, we seek guidance from spirit as we work together to create heaven on earth. And then wisdom, we have faith in God's wisdom and trust is still small within us. See, for me, the first one, being spirit-led, is that we seek guidance. We seek that inner guidance. We seek that divine guidance. We seek that guidance from God. And then wisdom is we actually follow it, <laughs> right? Like we seek the guidance, but then we trust it and we put it into action, I've been surprised to learn that um, we pray a lot here at Unity on the Bay. I mean, I have sometimes days of four or five meetings, and every single meeting we open up in prayer. Some of you have been in some of those meetings. All of the things that we do, first and foremost, we put prayer as the first activity of us coming together. And that's because we believe in the power of prayer. That's because we believe that prayer is the foundation of the unity movement, the unity on the bay, and our own lives. And it doesn't happen regularly in other places. How many of you get invited to work meetings where you get to pray a bunch of times? You probably do it internally, right? <laughs> but here we get to pray with each other, and that's a very beautiful thing. And recently, I've been in a couple of meetings where the minister doesn't even get invited to be the opening prayer. The leader who's ever leading the meeting or whatever will just turn to somebody and be like, you, can you share your prayer with us? Can you open us up to that wisdom and that guidance and to listen to that still small voice? How is it guiding us? I really invite you to consider how it has continued to guide unity on the bay and how it continually invites you to be guided to be unity on the bay. The Bhagavad Gita says, the one who is full of faith, who is devoted to wisdom and who has subdued the senses gains wisdom. Having gained wisdom, one attains supreme peace. Peace is in knowing that we are following spirit's direction and that with that, our success is assured. I skipped one of them. For those of you who remember our core values uh, alphabetically, and that was integrity. We work to embody which, that which we believe and strive to act in integrity with our principles. This is our fifth unity principle. It's not enough to know these truths. It's about living it. It's not enough to speak these core values every Sunday. It's about actually embodying them and leaning them out in the world. Gandhi also says, happiness is when what you think, what you say, and what you do are in harmony. That, to me, is integrity. To be in integrity with what we say we are wanting to be out in the world, to be in integrity with how we want to experience each other in the world. And I really invite us to not give up and not give in. To not give in to this idea that we're already there, right? Like, because it's a journey. And so integrity is about continually looking at the ways in which we can grow the ways we are showing up in the world. And so don't give in and just think it's done. And also don't give up when it gets difficult, when it gets challenging, when it gets hard, don't give up. Still know what you stand for and still be in gratitude that you have this North Star to lead you along. Integrity, to me, is knowing that we're working on being in integrity. Think about that, right? Integrity is knowing that we're working to be in integrity. Now I ask you, as I shared with you these core values, do you see a blessing in being part of a spiritual community that holds these values? Do you see the blessing of it? Do you see the recognition of God as the foundation for our lives when we share these values? And I also ask you, do you see ways in which you're being called into your good, into your divine Christhood, and into God's perfection in you? Do you see the blessing in being the ways in which this community can bring about these values into the world? Turn to your neighbor and say, I am grateful that you're here. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm grateful that you're here. Now turn to your neighbor again and say, I am because you are. I am because you are. And now turn to another neighbor and say, what I cannot do alone, we can do together. 
<laughs> that was a long one. All right, we'll work on it for the second service. I want to leave you with one quick uh, writing from Connie Fillmore. She's the great-granddaughter of Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, and she was asked, what is unity? These are core values, right? But what is unity? She said, unity is a family of loved ones drawn together by their mutual belief in an idea. The idea that holds us is that of a good and all-powerful God whose love indwells us gives us everything we need to live happy, healthy, productive lives. This idea and the people who believe it have created incredible blessings of positive thought and prayer for our world. Our history is filled with stories of answered prayer, prosperity, demonstrations, miracles of healing and peace. Raise your hand if you, to give praise, if you have experienced answered prayer, if you have experienced prosperity, if you experienced miracles and peace through unity and through your faith. She says, our future holds no less for each of us unfolds as God's beloved expression. Our individual spiritual growth speeds the spiritual development of our world, the spiritual development of our world. We are creating heaven on earth. We are doing it in conscious community. And I want to take a moment to just thank you for allowing Unity on Debate to be what it is and for allowing Unity on Debate to grow in what it is meant to be. Each and every one of us is a part of the fabric of this community. And when we say that Unity on the Bay is a divine idea in the mind of God, what we are saying is that we are ready to live God and embody our principles in greater ways. I give thanks for each and every one of you as I look through the room because you are Unity on the Bay. And quite honestly, I don't know what my life would be without Unity on the Bay. So thank you and namaste. Thank you, Reverend Juan. I like to share some of my takeaways. Um, so really just revisiting our core values and understanding that they are more than what we do. As we revisit them, we strive to make them who we are and what we embody and emanate to the rest of the world. So I think that's important. Also, you asked a question, and I wondered if it was a trick question. You said, do you see the diversity? And I was like, I don't know, yes, but no, because, <laughs> because I feel like when we all come together here at Unity on the Bay, we really do embody the oneness that we all are. So it was like, should I say no, because we are all one? So, but I did say yes, because I, I think that it wasn't a trick question. Anyway. Those are my takeaways, and thank you so much for that beautiful service, Reverend Juan, and reminding us what our core values are and how we need to live through them and embody them day by day, moment by moment. And now it is our gratitude opportunity. When we give and we are generous, we are emulating and giving the giving and generosity of God. This is one of the ways we get to know God more fully. Will you go deeper into the presence of God with me and through your generosity? We encourage you to go green by texting GIVE to 833-245-5645. That info is on the screen right now. And if you're here with us and you need an envelope, please just raise your hand and one of our wonderful ushers will come by to give that to you. I'm going to give you a few moments now in sacred silence to give in gratitude this morning. <laughs> <laughs> 